Hey everyone, I'm Alfred, and welcome back to Quake. Not exactly sure how, but I think I just accidentally re-triggered the platform. God. Not exactly sure what determines it, but... I spent some time on the wiki trying to figure out what the deal is. I learned that, yes, these things are zombies. I think this thing's called a fiend. Whoops. Actually, I think I have a save here. So let me see if I can get this to work a second time. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you just have to walk forward enough. Weird. I love that... Oop. I'm just gonna save over here. Oh god, it shows my fucking Steam library. Okay. Okay. That problem is solved. Also, I learned why these things have the fucking Nine Inch Nails logo on them. God damn it. Is there anything I can do once down here? That might be interesting. In fact, there is. Wow. I've mentioned how much I love infighting. Boy, we're in it now, huh? Maybe I can help him out. All right. So, the reason. Trent Reznor did the music for Quake. I don't know if that's what I'm currently hearing. Damn, whoops. Because it makes sense that that might be one of those things that they would change in a Steam release. And if that's the case, damn, what a shame. And what's more, wow. Trent Reznor actually also did sound effects for Quake Guy, for Ranger. Just because he was in the studio. So these things are called Death Knights, and according to the original Quake... I'm trying to skip the armor because I don't want it yet. According to the original Quake, like, strategy guide or manual... It says these canned meats have more of a tendency to open you up. Which I think is really funny. Mm hmm. Oh, God. It's so gnarly to see zombies down here. It makes sense, you know. One of the few things that I liked about World War Z, and let it be known, I don't think World War Z is a very good book. But, um, it has some things about it that are good. Uh, and in it, it describes how there's a, like, essentially this, like, lost... Ugh. It's a piranha. There's this, like, lost civilization of zombies that live under the sea. And 
And like for whatever reason, salt water, the most destructive thing on the planet. Think about it, right? What is erosion? It's just salt water, bro. Anyway, salt water, the most destructive thing on the planet. Oh, I can't even get it. Cannot, like, deteriorate all the zombie bodies. So, they're all just chilling down at the bottom of the ocean. Unable to get, like, killed easy. But they also can't really leave in order to go infect more people, so. Pardon me, I just wanted a few more supplies. Ready for action now, though. Of all the guys to voice act your main character, I guess Trent Reznor isn't like a bad pick, but like. Gold. But like, what the hell, right? Imagine if they could get Trent Reznor back. To be the guy in Quake Champions. Oh god. Jesus. Oh boy. Alright, gold key. Oh yeah, I learned that this thing's called a shambler, and apparently there's been like ongoing discourse on the internet over on whether or not it has fur or skin. People don't know. Fuck! But yeah, I also learned that there are, like, specific set palettes for, uh, for Quake. And it's base, castle, and fort or something. So yeah, there's, like, military base. There's, like, an ancient old-ass castle. Wow. Took that one on the chin. Uh, and I think the last, maybe the last one's caves. No idea anymore. Man, this game feels good. I keep doing this to myself. I keep going back to like old games and I'm like, man, too bad this never got a sequel. And it's probable that I will like Quake 4. But like, where else are you gonna shoot up a bunch of Elder Gods? What a vibe, right? Did you guys know that this so, like, the Elder Gods, right? Created in the 1910s to the 1930s, maybe 40s, by H.P. Uh, Lovecraft, a man afraid of everything. Accused as a racist, and he definitely is, but he's also many other things.
Oh, look at that. Cool. Uh, anyway, yeah. Lovecraft, also a classist, also afraid of everything. Just a weird fella in general. Hup. Should have got the health before. That was dumb of me. Okay. Well, that's fine, actually. I think the Shambler is actually from the Cthulhu Mythos. Thank you, Mr. Shambles. Can I go with this armor? Thank you. All right, stocked up. Much better this time. Anyway, uh, H.P. Lovecraft was a friend and fan, mutual fan with, Robert E. Howard, the guy who designed Conan the Barbarian. And so, as a show of their mutual friendship, there's actually some Conan stories that cross over with Cthulhu. And so Cthulhu is canon in Conan. They never actually do things like have Krom fight Cthulhu or, you know, have people... I think there's just, like, worshippers of him. So, okay. Ooh, God. Okay, cool. Noticing a little texture glitch, but that's okay. <laughs> Hell yeah. So anyway, apparently, uh, like, that connection could have been even further. But they decided to not go, like, too deep into it, which is a shame, but, like, imagine if Conan managed to stay, like, in the, like, very, very public domain. Oh god. So apparently the super nail gun is like one of the most ammo consumptive guns ever. Oh jeez. Uh oh. So there's this thing that id likes to use. I think it's called a dope fish. And it might originate from Commander Keen. They're pre uh Wolfenstein. Oh, cool. One of their pre Wolfenstein games, um Commander Keen. Uh I'm not sure though, but they hide it in some levels of some games that they make. <laughs> Did that make like that cartoon like thum sound? That's funny. I like that. <laughs> anyway, uh, the, there's a dope fish as late as Rage, which is kind of interesting. They're still doing this shit, you know? I, I think I might end up playing every id software game.
Thank you, nail traps. So baiting out his, uh, that's a bad looking door. I gotta be honest, I don't trust that a bit. Um, baiting out his melee attacks looks like it's a way to, a way to victory. Yeah, that's, uh, that looks pretty bad. Although that's a, like, Bahamut, uh, Baphomet skull, rather. Not exactly a, uh, like, Elder God thing. It's more of, like, a generic Satan thing, but... It never was a Satan thing. Uh, there's actually a very interesting story behind Baphomet that I love telling, so you're in luck. Uh, during the Crusades, a lot of stuff happened, as it does. Uh, and naturally, when there are a bunch of people belonging to the Muslim faith being... Uh, slaughtered by French people. They would call out to, you know, a god, uh, as you would, style at the time. And so, dumbass French people would hear, you know, people of the Muslim faith call out to, you know, this guy, you might have heard of him, Muhammad. You know, he's the prophet kind of a big deal, especially if you're a Muslim. Uh, and the dumbass French people had no way of understanding what they meant. So they were like, what's that word they're using? I don't recognize it. They're not speaking French. They may as well be speaking nothing. So, ooh, gotta watch that. Gotta watch the splash damage. Yowza. Uh, so yeah, they would call it to Muhammad, but, uh, French people, being stupid, heard it as Baphomet, and assumed that it had to be, like, a demon. And that's how they justified the Crusades themselves, because, like, they sure did kill a lot of people. They'd have to have something to justify it to themselves, you know? So yeah, they assumed that there was just this demon they'd never heard of called Baphomet. And, uh... They just strung together all of the things that they didn't like. And that's where the Baphomet comes from. So, like, it has the head of a goat. Uh, I think it has, like, both a penis and breasts because, like... You know. This is... France from like what a thousand AD to 1700s AD uh, I mean I guess that really doesn't I don't need to say much more besides that it's France it's medieval France not a great place to be Okay. Oh, cool. I love how they just go, Urgh. So yeah, they just strung together a bunch of things they didn't like, like having a goat for a head, having indeterminate gender, uh, having wings, and that's why Baphomet has all of those. Uh, yeah, it's modeled well enough that you can squeeze things through this gap. Love the old classic, like, 
like uh, pill grenades, I guess. Also, these are cool stained glass windows. I kind of like them. That would make a good poster, I think. Oh boy. Get up there, Ranger. So yeah, the nail gun is like extremely consumptive of ammo, but boy does it do some damage. So I've seen a, a lot less in the way of, of guns in this game. Not necessarily a bad thing. Jeez! Especially if each gun is better. This ain't good. Damn it, fell right back in. Gulped a load of slime. Gross. So I'm in the Ebon Fortress. Okay. The way they wrote gulped a load of slime is pretty gross, to be honest. I don't, I don't think this is actually the case, but I feel as though Doom has more weapons. Damn. That wall looks breakable. That's all. I kind of want to kill them now because I know that they cause problems for me later. Man. I think that if you were going to sum up a teenager in the 1990s, this game would be how you do it, you know? Violent video games. Nine Inch Nails. That's about it, really. <laughs> Ooh, Punisher comics. Or anything by Garth Ennis. Enis? It has two N's, so... I'm gonna err on the side of Ennis. So it looks like it's really easy to get these guys to infight with anyone. Probably thanks to just the... Jeez. Stop that. Not cool, bro. Don't do that. So can I pick this up? Okay, I can. See, it looks like nail gun and super nail gun share ammo. Shotgun and super shotgun share ammo. Nice. And I guess grenade and rockets are different things. Doesn't actually appear to be the case. Okay. So yeah, I guess those things all just share ammo. Weird. Man. Imagine if they brought Trent Reznor back for Quake 5, if that ever comes out. I I would pre-order that game. I don't think I've pre-ordered a game in, like, years. Mm. 
<laughs> so in Doom, there's a uh, exception to the oh boy to the rule of infighting. Enemies of the same type cannot infight. Damn it. So an imp hitting an imp with a fireball will not cause infighting. Uh, there is one exception to that rule, but it is not really, like, it's more that I didn't explain the rule right, but I digress. Basically, the actual rule is that anything that fires a projectile is treated as a thing that fired the projectile, and any projectile of that thing is treated as the same thing. So if an imp fires a fireball, it is fired an imp fireball. Nice. Uh, it's fired an imp fireball, and that is what that thing is now, you know? So if that fireball hits another imp, it won't do damage. Because, you know, an imp can't damage an imp with a fireball. But specifically because an imp fireball can't damage an imp. It's a very simple and subtle thing done in the code. Uh, but it's pretty smart. Now there is a glitch that you can do where uh, you trick a monster into fighting a barrel. Uh, and that can get monsters to infight themselves, in fact, not just enemies of their own species, of the same species. Nice. That's awesome. And the biosuit. Biosuit's another thing from Doom. Mmm. Sorry, just focusing in there for a sec. Anyway, I'm wondering if these guys have a similar hard-coded exception. Or if they're, uh, if really the code of Quake does. I think he's too small to get in here. I think I know why I can't pick that up, but more on that later. Oh, I got the Chilber key, so I can go through Chilber doors. Mm, should have waited. Sorry, I'm getting distracted. This has excellent gunplay. So can you blame me? Well, yes, you can. This is supposed to be my job. Anyway, um... Hit scan weapons. So with with this, you shoot it and a projectile comes out and it bounces. But with this, the way that it works is basically the bullets travel so fast that they're already at the opposite wall wherever you're pointing. It's not a thing where, you know, the thing flies out of the gun. It's more that, you know, math is being done to just put things, put the pellets of the shotgun at the opposite wall of wherever it was laid down, you know? So in this case, there's an enemy in between me and the wall, so it interrupts the shotgun pellets reaching said wall. Uh, 
uh, and deals damage. And one thing about uh, infighting in Doom is that hit scanners do not have the same rules because there is no rule for hit scan uh, the same way that there would be for Oh yeah, that's a shambler. I'm glad I kind of felt that out. Oh boy. Come on down. You shy, fellas. Fuck. Well, I feel like a dummy. I guess there's no going back. And uh, I guess we'll just have to get good on this fight, huh? Who boy. Anyway, yeah, because uh, hit scan just hits something and deals damage, there's no rule, so hit scanners can infight with anything no matter what. And they will infight with anything no matter what. So, shotgunner will hit a shotgunner, chain gunner will hit each other. Okay, alright, I'm feeling good in the hood. Any health up here? Yeah. I kind of figured I might want to come out swinging there. Anyway. My assumption is that these guys have a rule where they can't damage themselves with their own grenades, which also would prevent infighting. I'm gonna save here. I know it's kind of like... not the way people play this game, usually you just do it all in one. But I've been playing for a bit. Besides, what I really need is the confidence. Knowing that I have saved will make me confident. Just trying to let them in fight. Alright. What I need to do is let them in fight. Or, alternatively... Buddy, I will shoot these switches the second I can, but until that happens, we've got a little problem here, you know? Oh, hello there! I love how it says, I've got the shells, you know, the one that everyone shares. Alright. So, Doom 1 is comprised of three episodes initially I think they planned for three and then they later added on a fourth episode and the fourth episode is really really hard and in fact some people don't like it um, so some people only play the three episodes if they're gonna play actually I've been recording for a while I get into this later um, so until then I've been Alfred this has been Quake thank you guys for coming uh, I hope you're enjoying it I'm enjoying playing it a lot as you can see, I'm getting sucked in and forgetting to stop my recording. Uh, so I'll see you guys next time. Bye.